Okay, YouTube, I've decided after much consideration that I am going to pull the bottom end out of my knuckle. It's been together for about 24 years and I've ridden it quite a bit, but when I ended up having the rocker box gaskets leaking oil, I found out that I had to pull the heads off in order to get the rear rocker box cover off. Then with decided it was a good time to do a valve job. When I removed the front head, I realized that the front exhaust valve guide had backed out a little bit on the knuckles that holds the lower tin in place. So that tin was loose and had quite a bit of uh, oil leaking from it. Then I also realized that the front head had a blown head gasket and the rear head, the head gasket, wasn't looking that great. At that point, I decided while I have the top end off, I always try to put rings in it and have the cylinders honed. When I took a look at the um, cylinders, they needed a little more than a hone. Um, ended up needing to be bored. I uh, got the pistons for the cylinders and new rings and I was going to have them bored and then realized if I had that much going on with the top end is probably a good time to have the bottom end freshened up. Plus the guy I use is 67 years old and he is six months booked at all times and then you have to wait three or four months before you can even get your engine there to him for the six month wait. Um, he's going to be getting out of it most likely soon or slowing down and he's the best in the country. So with that in mind, I thought now's the time to do the bottom end while I still can and have him do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the negative battery because I haven't done that up to this point. And then I'll start to remove the oil and oil lines. I'll remove the distributor off the motor and then the primary section. Uh, most likely, I think I have to take some of the clutch off to get the primary off and then the mounting bolts for the engine. It's also important to note that anytime you do any kind of major engine work that you should be flushing out the oil tank completely and the oil lines. To go one step further, really anytime you're changing oil on any of your uh, motorcycles, you should do your best to try and flush out the oil tanks to get any metal out of them. Okay, these nuts on these hard lines are 11 sixteenths and the inner one here goes to the vent on the engine so that you connect the two vents together and then this is for the return the outer one up here is the return of the oil pump and then you have one lower one that's here and runs down under and that is the feed the oil feed to the oil pump so I'll take the vent off first I haven't had to work on this bike since I built it and put it on the road I started building it in 97 and put it on the road in 1999 and haven't had to really do anything to it in that amount of time except for some general minor maintenance. When I bought this bike it was about halfway through a restoration. The motor had been rebuilt and the transmission and the tires were on it. Now I'm going to back up the lower fitting with a 5 8 wrench. I watch quite a few videos online and if it is that you're going to take your motorcycle or send your motor or, or something like that somewhere, you should really watch the videos and even from a layman's perspective, try and get an idea of whether the person is just doing a lot of show or they actually know what they're doing. The only one I found extremely credible was Kevin Baker and that's the name of his YouTube channel. And it's Kevin Baker's Garage or Baker's Garage. His videos are amazing and the guy is extremely talented. Much more than I'm ever going to be. Um, you know, I see some of these other guys like Dragon Man and a lot of people uh, on different Facebook pages recommend him. And that guy, I wouldn't send my lawnmower to that guy, let alone anything that was worth any money. Um, Another one's uh, Taro Machine. Both these guys got a ton of equipment, but then do really sketchy stuff. If you watch, and you watch, and then check out Kevin ba uh, Kevin Baker's channel. You watch these guys, and they, they are just unbelievable with what they're doing, and and 
and playing it right on right on YouTube as if what they're doing is actually legitimate. Just because you have a lot of tools and equipment doesn't mean you know what you're doing. Okay, the oil drain plug on the oil tank is 7 8 on this motorcycle. And I imagine the 60 weight oil in 35 degree weather is going to take its time coming out. It's actually coming out faster than I thought it would. I edit my videos down. I like more of a bullet point type of video when I'm doing this. I don't think you need to see like every turn of a nut or something like that as I'm doing it. Okay, in order to get the suction hose off or the supply hose off to the pump, I have to take this exhaust bracket off or this piece of exhaust and be able to get a wrench in there. This is the uh, brake light switch and the way it works is a spring off of a lever off the brake arm is mechanical brakes, mechanical drum. I'll take this at some point and clean it all up but at this point I'll just put it back together so I don't lose anything. I always put Loctite on everything when I'm working on these bikes. Next I'll take off the wire off the oil pressure sender for the low oil light. Okay, the motor mount bolts have castled nuts that have cotter pins on them. The motor mount bolts are 9 16 and the nuts are also. As you can see, it's a castled nut. This is the timing retard cable that I'm removing. You have to make sure that when you put this bracket back on that your wires go underneath of it. And I'll put, the, this is the cutout relay for charging. You have to actually read the Harley manual. I read it a while ago. I understand how it does it. One side of the relay goes to the battery and the other side goes to the charging output. And then if the difference is greater, if the battery is lower than the generator output is, it pulls the relay in and puts generator output to the battery to charge it. So it's on and off as the battery is charging. I'm going to pull the distributor next. Okay, I removed the distributor wire off the rear side of the, the coil. And this E Beyond has two wires. So the black one was to the rear of the coil and then the red one goes to the battery wire of the coil. Now I'm going to remove the two 7 16 bolts that hold the distributor down. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Doesn't cost you anything. But, uh... Supposedly it helps. I don't know why, but I see everybody say that on their videos. So as you can see, these bolts that hold down the distributor kind of have a funky shape to them, like the head's kind of domed a little. Now I'm just going to pull the distributor out. And there you have it. You always want to check that the bushings are good in these and there's no excessive play especially side to side. A very slight up and down movement. 
There's also a gasket that goes underneath of it. And it just so happens it came off in one piece. All right, next I think I'm gonna take the generator out. And the way the generator comes out is you have two screws right here on the cam cover that take that generator out. Before you can top it out, there's a band that holds it on here that you have to take off. And also I should take the wiring off. The terminal to the rear has a wire that goes to the back side of the cutout relay. And then the terminal in the front goes up into the wiring harness. The nuts on those terminals are 5 16 So these terminals have a nut on the bottom side, which is also 5 16 so you want to back these up so they don't spin on the inside. And I couldn't get a 5 16 ignition wrench on them. So I'm just going to kind of try and grab a hold of the whole thing with this small pair of pliers. And that loosened it up. It didn't take much. So the nut for the strap is half inch. And then you just lift up on the strap. And that will give you enough to get the generator out. And just get a little pull, get it out past, and it comes right out just like that. And it does have a gasket on the back side of it. While I'm here, I'm going to take one of the front motor mount bolts off. Now the other. And this front one has this real oddball set up because the bolt goes in from the bottom and this stops it from spinning up in the front of the engine. A lot of time on the cam cover, these are cracked because somebody over tightened them or didn't have the band for the generator and it cracks them. Thankfully mine are good. So in order to get the engine out, I have to get the primary unbolted from it, which means I have to take out the left side floorboard. They are 9 16 nuts. Okay, now I'm going to take the primary cover off. Okay, and here's the business end of the deal. Now as you can see, oily as it should be. What happens on these is right here you have a hose that comes off the oil pump and there's a little screw on there and you, you shim the screw out and it lets more oil come past the pressure side of the oil pump just a little bit. It comes in here and the engine when the pistons come down and it's releasing the air from the motor it comes out here and pushes that oil out onto the chain. Now you can see the chain needs to be adjusted. The chain's good and oily just like it should be. Now I'm going to pull the engine sprocket off. The engine sprocket nut is inch and an eighth. So I ended up taking the clutch off and I'll do a video on how to put the clutch back together be a separate video. But the one thing I wanted to point out here, I'll point it out in the next video also is the clutch hub rides on these bearings here. So when the engine's spinning and the transmission's not or it's disengaged, the hub rotates on these bearings. And what happens because you have one bearing here, it's like every other that there's a lot of movement with the clutch hub like this. There's a product out there called the Big Fix. And that Big Fix stacks this with bearings the entire way, needle bearings the entire length, and fills this cavity. 
So when I go back together, I'll be putting the big fix on this and I'll, that'll be part of that video, but it is well worth it. If you have one of these old style clutches, either a three finger or five finger clutch, you should get the big fix. It's worth every penny. Okay, so I did wind up putting some heat on it. I didn't really get the shaft hot. Um, this is tapered and it's a key. So that's why it was hard to get off. But like I said, I put the I put some heat on the sprocket and then I put the nut on and gave it a tap with a soft blow hammer and a little pry behind it. And it came off pretty easy. Anyway, you take these four bolts off here and that separates the engine from the inner primary in order to take off the inner primary bolts to the motor you have to bend back the locking tab on all three of them i was able to get the rear motor mount bolt out here without taking the inner primary off when i can pick the motor up and then move it out of the primary and out of the bike. Hopefully I can just pull this right out of here like that. And there you have the bottom end removal on a knucklehead. All right, thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said earlier, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and if you have any questions that you think I can help you with, please leave them in the comments. I do read all the comments.